During GM's year-end earnings call, CEO Mary Barra said that GM would be deploying plug-in hybrid technology in strategic segments. What's a strategic segment? Well, full-size pickups are kind of what keeps GM in business. Ford offers a hybrid version of the F-150 to improve fuel economy, but it does not eliminate tailpipe emissions. Ram, however, is coming out with an extended range EV that uses a V6 engine to recharge the EV battery. Called Ram Charger, it's going to be a very interesting truck, and GM should be worried about it. During the 2010s, Ram sales grew, mostly at the expense of Chevrolet and GMC, which didn't have the best-looking trucks at the time with cheap-looking interiors. Reports are that GM engineers are working to quickly bring to market a plug-in hybrid version of their full-size trucks. Nice. But what absolutely sucks is that GM leadership decided to kill development of a compact electric pickup and an electric van to help fund the investments into plug-ins. This begs the question, what is GM's plan? In this video, let's explore the possibilities. To start with, there are two basic types of plug-in hybrids. Nearly all the PHEVs on the road in the U.S. are a parallel design. This configuration is essentially a combustion engine vehicle with added electrification to allow it to drive, I don't know, 20 miles or more on electricity alone. Toyota has their prime models, Jeep has 4xe, Hyundai, Kia, Ford, BMW, Audi, oh my, all offer PHEV versions of their combustion engine vehicles. A series plug-in hybrid is essentially an all-electric vehicle with a gas engine added as a range extender to the EV battery. More often, they are referred to as extended range EVs or an EV with a range extender. The upcoming Ram Ram Charger will use this configuration, as did the old Chevrolet Volt with a V, and the BMW i3 with the optional range extender. The gas engine does not drive the wheels. It is attached to a generator to recharge the electric vehicle battery. Let's explore this option to see if that's what GM is working on. With this configuration, GM would start off with their Silverado EV and find a way to package a gas engine somewhere. Right off the bat, I think this is unlikely. When their EV trucks were being developed, GM planned to leapfrog hybrid and plug-in hybrid powertrains and go straight to battery electric. It seems very unlikely that they would have package protected for maybe someday putting a gas engine in the frunk. Alternatively, if they start with their current full-size combustion engine trucks, they could package their Ultium components somewhere in the frame replace the transmission, driveline, and rear axle with an electric motor, package a large EV battery somewhere between the frame rails, in place of the transmission, add a generator to the engine to recharge the EV battery. This option, too, I'm going to say is unlikely. GM wants this quickly, delivered in a capital and cost-efficient way. I do not see this as a quick fix for not having a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid in their lineup today. I believe that an extended range EV or series plug-in hybrid is very unlikely. Ironically, that's what the Chevrolet Volt was that they gave up. This is also what the Via Motors E-Rev pickup was. Remember that truck? Some GM executives went off and converted some GM pickups and vans and sold them over a decade ago. GM would have to resurrect all this engineering. It would take time and money. I believe GM is working on a more traditional plug-in hybrid. GM said the technology they will use is already in production in other markets. Okay, that could be the Buick Velite 6 in China, otherwise known as the Chevrolet Menlo. That's a traditional PHEV, but that powertrain is not powerful enough for a full-size pickup. The electric motor, or motors, in a PHEV need to be sufficiently powerful enough to propel the vehicle by itself without the gas engine. If every time you accelerate gently from a stoplight, the gas engine has to fire up, you're not going to reduce gas consumption or tailpipe emissions. What about the Corvette E-Ray? That's actually a hybrid powertrain, not a plug-in hybrid. The front wheels are driven by an electric motor to boost performance, but it would not help much with fuel efficiency or emissions. A more intriguing possibility, if you go back just a couple of years, 
is the Cadillac CT6 PHEV. Now, that powertrain was manufactured in the U.S., then shipped to China and assembled into vehicles and sold in that market. They started to import some plug-in CT6 back to the U.S. in small numbers, but they did not sell well. The powertrain featured a turbocharged four-cylinder made it to a transmission containing two electric motors that put out good power combined to move that large rear-wheel drive sedan on electricity alone or combine it with a turbo four-cylinder to provide extra power. GM's current trucks feature a 2.7-liter turbo four-cylinder as the base engine. It was specifically engineered for trucks to provide lots of torque. Mate that to a transmission with two electric motors, and you could have something. Oh, no. Except the transmission GM used in the CT6 PHEV is an ECVT, a continuously variable transmission. I've always been skeptical of CVTs, especially if you're towing. Lots of automakers use them to improve fuel economy, though. You know, what's your opinion? Would you be worried about a pickup truck with an ECVT? Or am I just being overly cautious? Tell me in the notes. Share your thoughts. I would prefer that they stick with the 8-speed transmission used in the 2.7 liter today. I would also prefer a plug-in version of a more powerful engine. But GM has a bit of a hole in their pickup truck lineup. They drop the V6 engine from their full-size pickups. If you want more power, you have to jump all the way up to the V8 engines. They did have plans for an inline six-cylinder engine, basically adding two more cylinders to that 2.7-liter four-cylinder. That would have given them an engine similar to the Hurricane engines going into the new Ram trucks, but reports are that that engine program got killed last year. So it appears that the 2.7-liter turbo is the likely candidate to make a plug-in, unless they decide to bring a V6 engine back to its full-size trucks from one of their car and SUV programs, which would add build complexity to the lineup. Output from the electric motors, I believe, needs to be 200 horsepower at a minimum, maybe more. Again, the electric motors need to provide enough power for good daily drivability, and the gas engine fires up only as needed for faster acceleration and higher speeds. If you're towing, the electric drive mode would likely be deactivated when you put the truck into tow mode. A slight variation of this configuration is to place one or two electric motors between the engine and the transmission, plus a smaller electric motor on the front of the engine as a belted starter alternator. The motor is less powerful driving the accessory belt to start the engine or to act as an alternator to recharge the 12 volt battery. It can also provide boosts of power, kind of like an electric supercharger. This layout is like the Jeep 4xe system, a small electric motor on the engine, plus a larger electric motor sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. In summary, I do not see an obvious plug-in hybrid powertrain currently within GM that you can just drop into their full-size pickups, but the expertise for how to make them is there, unless they force those engineers into retirement. They are most likely to pursue a traditional parallel PHEV design with a minimum of 200 horsepower from the electric motors, and I believe mated to the 2.7 liter turbo engine. As for the battery to power this, it could be pretty large. California wants to ban the sale of new combustion engine vehicles by 2035, but they are proposing that plug-in hybrids with a minimum of 70 miles of all-electric range would still be allowed. To achieve this, I estimate they would need about 55 kilowatt hours of battery to get that kind of range. That's a big battery for a PHEV. 2035 is a long ways off, so they could put a smaller battery in for now, less expensive, and deliver less range. That would be a good start to counter the threat from the Ram Ram Charger and hybrids from Ford and Toyota. Plug-in hybrids sound great to some people, but you can see they're not cheap. Adding electric motors, controllers, and a good size EV battery adds thousands of dollars in material cost and development. Plus, you still need to put gas and oil in it, unlike an EV. In normal driving, you can easily drive 60% of the miles on electricity alone, but only if you plug it in regularly. Too often, people buy a PHEV, 
then don't plug it in, and they do not see much fuel savings. They would be better off just getting a hybrid if they don't want to plug it in. GM said they'd provide an update on their plans later this year. Rumors of this started surfacing a few months ago, but I would not expect to see this in showrooms until the end of 2025. GM is still committed to electric vehicles, but they realize that they also need hybrids and plug-in hybrids to offer, especially in critical segments like pickups and full-size SUVs. I would love to see this roll into the Chevy Tahoe as an option. That vehicle, too, needs another more fuel-efficient powertrain option. It only offers gas V8s and a diesel, which is not a big seller and could likely get dropped. Jeep has said that they would be introducing a 4xe version of the Wagoneer, and Toyota already offers a hybrid version of the Sequoia. Recent headlines try to boil down the decision to hybrids or EVs. But it's not or, it's and. Traditional automakers like GM needs hybrids and battery electric models in their showrooms, and in some critical segments, plug-in hybrids as well. GM needs more hybrids, Toyota needs more battery electrics. Both have announced plans to fill the holes in their lineup. We'll have to wait to learn more about what GM is cooking up. In the meantime, if you like this video, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.